Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby, St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because every day we have covered it to have meaningful moments with the Master in the Word of God. This entire week, we've been looking at how to get your mind to mind, how to maintain emotional and mental stability during the pandemic. And we have been listening to what Paul says in the book of Philippians, the last chapter, chapter four. And already we have seen that if you want to get your mind to mind, if you want to keep your mind together, then you have to rejoice in the Lord. Have union with the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is the only person who's going to be there for you always. Secondly, you have to practice the presence of the Lord. Let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Practice the presence of the Lord. And then we looked at yesterday, don't worry. God will give you just enough grace and strength to get through today. It's not what you will face today that's breaking you down. It's when you bring next week, next month's problems in today, today that you have a breakdown. So those are three things that helps us mentally. And it's right here in the fourth chapter of Philippians. Now let's go to the fourth principle. Amen. Practice the presence of God. Rejoice, worry. And here's principle number four, Philippians chapter four. And verse six, it says, don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. So the fourth principle is this, learn how to pray. Ask God for what you need and God will answer those prayers. God will give you what you need. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse six says this, no one can please God without faith, but whoever comes to God, comes to God in, fair, in prayer, must have faith that God exists and he and, and rewards those who seek him. So when you seek God in prayer, some way, somehow God's going to reward you for seeking him. Look at Matthew chapter seven, verse, verse 11. As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him. Now I'm going to tell you something that is critically important to know about prayer and how God acts. Anything God does in your life or in the world was started because somebody prayed. That's the power of prayer. And Paul says again in Philippians chapter four, verse six, after he says uh, to rejoice, after he says the Lord is at hand and act like the Lord is present. After he says, don't worry about anything. Then the fourth thing he says is to pray, pray, ask God for what you need. Pray. I heard uh, the rate Dr. A. Russell Alcott, who's the pastor of the New Zion Baptist Church, and he was the first person I ever heard say this. He, he is such a great preacher, great man of God. And Dr. Alcott said, he said, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. And that's true. If you don't have any power, it's because you're not praying and you should pray every day. Now, if you're an occasional prayer and you only pray during a crisis or you act like God is your spare tire, when do you use a spare tire? You only use a spare tire when the other tires go flat and then you pray that the tire is there. Well, that's not prayer. Prayer is a relationship. It's an ongoing conversation with God. And if God has not answered your prayers lately, could it be that God is busy with regular customers? You need to become a regular customer when it comes to prayer. Now, what is prayer? Prayer is simply this, talking to and listening to God. Talking to and listening to God. You talk to God. Often we use the, the acrostic acts, A-C-T-S, A, adoration, 
pray and adore God. C, confession, confess your sins to God. T, thanksgiving, ask supplication. Tell God what you need. But listen to God. You listen to God by having your Bible open and reading the word and letting God speak to you. You listen to God by getting teachings from a Sunday school teacher or a minister or someone who has been studying the Word of God and listening as you've been doing all these many months with these powerful points to ponder and God will speak to you. And then sometimes God speaks to you in a still small voice or in, in an impression. He'll put something on your heart and your mind. And you know that it's God speaking to you because it's in alignment with his, God, with his Word and, and somebody whom you have respect for who is a very spiritually mature person, you've talked with them and they seem to be confirming what the impression that God has put on your heart. But prayer is not just you talking to God, but it's you talking to God and listening to God. Now, why don't we pray? And it's a sin not to pray. Samuel said this, Samuel said, I will not sin against the Lord by not praying for you. And not to pray is a sin. Why don't we pray? Well, sometimes we don't pray because of pride. We overestimate ourselves and we think we can do it. <laughs> but there's some things, in fact, nothing you can do. You can't do anything without God. But pride causes us to overestimate ourselves. A second reason we don't pray is because we underestimate God's power. That's called unbelief. So pride, I overestimate myself. Unbelief, I underestimate the power of God. You ask Moses, does God answer prayer? He'll say, well, I prayed and the Red Sea opened. You ask Joshua, does God answer prayer? He'll say, oh, yes, I prayed and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. You ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, does God answer prayer? And they will tell you yet that he put an air conditioning unit in a fiery furnace and we were able to walk around in the flames. You ask Daniel, does God answer prayer? And he will tell you, yes, God answers prayer because I was in a den with Simba, Leo, and these other lions and God made those lions lay down. You ask Paul and Silas, does God answer prayer? They, Paul and Silas will say, oh, yes, God answers prayer. We, we overestimate ourselves, which is unbelief. We underestimate the power of God, our pride, um, and we overestimate ourselves, which is pride. We underestimate God, which is unbelief. And then we don't pray because we overestimate the difficulty of it. And that's ignorance. We don't pray because of pride, overestimate ourselves. We don't pray because of unbelief, underestimate God. We don't pray because we overestimate the difficulty and that is ignorance because we've been to church and we heard some professional deacon pray a prayer that they pray, by the way, the same prayer or some preacher says the same prayer every week. And so they've mastered it. And we say, well, we can't be articulate like them. So I can't pray because I don't know all these theological words to use. And so we, we, we think it's too difficult to pray. But prayer is just simply telling God how you feel. Just pouring your heart out to God. And don't use Christianese language. Don't use Christianese language. Don't use thou, father, heart, uh, omnipotent and benevolent. You don't have to use all those, you know, high sounding religious words. When my kids, when they were young, or I have a, my, 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 uh, my granddaughter, little Zuri, she, she, she calls me the sucker granddaddy because she's always coming to me to get a sucker. Anytime I see her and I just get me some suckers and she'll take me off to the side and she'll start praying to me. She don't, she don't pray to her grandmama. Mm -mm. She don't ask uh, my wife for a sucker because she knows that grandmama won't give her a sucker. But she knows that granddaddy will give her the sucker. So she, when she comes in, she'll take me out to the side and she'll say, granddaddy, do you have a sucker candy for me? And she doesn't go and say, dearest grandfather, benevolent creator of the Cosby clan, would thou in the name of Jesus bestow upon me, Zuri, your granddaughter, a lollipop 
a sucker, what if thou doest this? She doesn't do that. She just comes to me with simplicity and humility because she has a relationship with me. And she believes that if she asks, I will give it to her. If I, she believes I have it and she believes I'll share it. So she says, hey, granddaddy, do you have a sucker candy for me? And you know what? I can't think of one time that that girl has asked granddaddy for a sucker candy that she didn't get her sucker candy. Now, I may have had to delay giving it to her. And sometimes when we pray, God will say yes, and then God will say no, and then God will say wait. And then sometimes God will say, well, I'm not going to give you that, but I'm going to give you something better than that. So he says no to one thing so God can say yes to another thing. But she gets her sucker candy. Now, if I can do that for, Christ, for, for, excuse me, for Zuri, will not God, whose love is infinitely more than human love, not do that for us? We overestimate ourselves. That's pride. We underestimate God. That's unbelief. We overestimate the difficulty of it. That's ignorance. And then we underestimate the value of it. In other words, we don't want to give it any time. We don't give it any time. But if you take time out to pray and really pray, it's almost like suppose a bus driver is driving a bus, a city bus or whatever bus, and he's driving at night and all of a sudden he's in a ditch. And so he gets out of the bus and he starts pu trying to push the bus out of the ditch, not realizing that sitting in the bus is Clark Kent. You don't push the bus when Clark Kent is on the bus and wants to help you. And when you have God in your life, you've got the power through prayer to get out of a lot of ditches. And if you're going to maintain your mind in this pandemic, you got to rejoice in the Lord because you can lose anything but the Lord. You've got to practice the presence of the Lord. Let your moderations be known unto man. The Lord is at hand. You can't worry about anything. God will give you grace to meet tomorrow when tomorrow comes. And then fourth, you've got to pray about everything. Let God know what you need in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and for these wonderful principles that, were, that are right there in the fourth chapter of Philippians. They are inspiring us. Somebody is really being inspired by this word. But Lord, we just don't want inspiration. We want to incorporate it into our lives and we want to do exactly what the word says to do in the name of Jesus. Grant that it might happen in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on this Another Powerful Point to Ponder. Uh, don't forget, everybody needs a church home. If you don't have a church home, come and become a part of the St. Stephen Baptist Church. Even if you are in Chicago or Atlanta or Los Angeles or New York or London, you can still be a part of our online campus, active. We want to get you in a Sunday school class. We want to get you to come to do some things in your community in the name of Jesus. As a, in, in your community, even though you're connected to St. Stephen Church, you're going to still be a part of a fellowship, all right? So if you don't have a church home, it's time to get connected to the church. So you contact us at, at info at ssclive.org, info at ssclive.org. God bless you. Tomorrow we'll pick up on this again, and we'll close out Saturday, and you want to be here, believe me, for Saturday. Journey with us this week as we get our minds to mind. And as we close, don't forget we say it every day. Stay safe, stay sane. If you can, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow.